So what is up, guys? Nick here, helping you to master your technology. Apple iPhone 15 Plus, three months later, honest review. Now, in this video, we're going to talk about you know my honest take on this phone after being an owner and user of three months. And I actually switched over to this for the past couple of weeks. And I got to tell you, after giving it even more of a run, I got to say, I'm getting pretty um, happy with this phone right here. You'll see why in this video. We're going to begin with the first thing and is, does this feel worth the price? So this phone's around $899, $929 if you're not buying it with a carrier. With the storage capacities, you can go up over $1,000 for this phone. And when you think about the iPhone 10 from about five years ago, giving you a smaller 5.8 inch screen for a 999 dual camera. This now has a 10X zoom that you would have got on the iPhone 10. This seems like a good deal right now. This is a much bigger phone, has OLED display just like iPhone 10. It does have a dynamic island now. It's, while not comparable to the 10 in terms of the price, if you look at it in that perspective, it's a pretty darn good value. But when you look at older phones like the 13 Pro Max that still have 120 hertz, it's kind of a little bit more questionable and the market has a lot of phones now that is um, kind of nice compared to this in terms of the price point, like a Pixel 8 Pro, for example. So it's a little bit tricky, but if you just got to have Apple and you want it under a grand, I think it's a pretty decent deal. Um, I think it's slightly overpriced without a trade-in or incentive, but at the same time, I think it's still it has its place. Let's just put it that way. It has its place in the market. So let's talk about the battery life. So we have a 77% right now on here. This has been the key reason why I've been really enjoying this. As a matter of fact, I haven't really craved going back on my 15 Pro Max at the moment because the battery life on here is to me um, just as good, if not better in certain situations. What I like about this one though, is that because it has a 60 Hertz refresh rate, I can literally just turn on low power mode and I don't really notice a difference. But with the 15 Pro Max, when I turn on low power mode, it goes to the 60 Hertz and then it's kind of jarring to switch between the two. So I actually leave this on low power mode more often um, just to get even longer life. And I'm getting into the next half of the next day. Like the other day I took it off charge at three o'clock and then the next day I didn't need to charge it till like seven at night. This battery life is strong on the iPhone 15 plus. So if you're looking for a really strong battery life phone, iPhone, this is the move. The next thing I want to talk about is the way this feels. This has been probably one of the underappreciated things about regular 15 and 15 plus. Um, it's just the way it feels. It kind of reminds you of an older pro model. So it's kind of getting closer to that feel of that. And I think this is an excellent feel in hand. It just feels much smoother in the corners. The matte black color is just so beautiful to me. And also, you know, the edges are just super clean. So everything, I actually like the look of this phone more than the space black iPhone 14 Pro Max. This is just so clean with the matte black all the way across the back. Reminds me of the matte black iPhone 7 Plus, which was one of my favorite looking iPhones of all time. So the color and the feel just makes me not really crave a Pro so much. So if you're the type of person who doesn't want to buy the Pro, this is one of the better years um, for options in terms of the base models, especially the 15 Plus. This thing is just like so nice feeling for not being a Pro level iPhone. So the cameras on the surface look like, oh, here we go again, another dual camera setup. But there's something up this camera sleeve that really makes this very enjoyable, and it's this. So it shoots at 24 megapixels on the main sensor because it's cropping in at 48 megapixel. So this is closer to a pro of last year. In addition, they now allow you to crop in as well for a two times zoom. So you don't have to be limited to a digital zoom only. It's kind of a crop in, so it's pretty good. Also, your digital does increase to 10 times. And I find that this is about the, the most most people will actually need. Um, going past that, like 15 to 30, that's for people who are serious into photography. Um, most people are gonna be very happy with this while retaining the ultra wide zoom here. So this camera has been an excellent option. Also, of course, with the video, you're getting the same video quality as like a pro series just about. And then on the front, you have that same automatic portrait detection thing. So when you go to the photo, 
It detects the face, automatically detects portrait mode, and Smart HDR5 means that the results that actually come out of this camera are pretty insane. Like, especially outdoors, they look better than the iPhone 14 and the 13. So, I really just love the camera on the base model this year. I think it's a nice upgrade. It really is. And especially for those who always thought there wasn't enough zoom, I think there's enough zoom now on the base model for most people. Maybe in the future we'll have 15 times on the regular model. And yes, there's co competitors have even more. But for me, this has been enough. And um, the results that turn out of this are pretty much on par with the Pro. Uh, in most scenarios, just the Pro has a little bit more if you want to go a little bit deeper. This is still a really excellent option, even though it just looks like a basic iPhone camera setup. So I'm not going to talk too much about this, but the USB-C port has been something you got to get used to if you have a lot of lightning cables. I find myself still trying to stick a lightning port in there, a lightning cable in there. So this takes a little getting used to when you get into this, but it's um it's a great addition considering that the iPad has it, the Mac has it. But if you're a type of user who don't have a lot of USB-C products, this does take a little getting used to. Also, it's a little bit slower than the iPhone 15 Pro Maxes and a lot of Android phones, so it's not seeming like a great value there, but at least it's there, and we needed it because it's going to become the universal standard. It already has been for a while, um, so in the future, most iPhone, all iPhones will be using USB-C, so this is a good change. The Dynamic Island has truly set this phone apart from other options because when you're doing things like listening to music, getting uber eats orders getting lift rides you can actually see the car you see how it's going through the track there you can actually see the car getting closer and closer to your destination when you're actually in a lift ride um, that's another usage of it in addition you could set timers which is supremely useful especially let's say you're cooking or something and you need to just set a timer really quickly and you need to see it up there you actually can um, just check it without having to go into the app all the time. It's very useful, especially when cooking. You actually have two timers at the same time, and you can answer calls up there, which is not that useful, but it's there. It just really makes this phone feel different from the past options. So I love the addition of Dynamic Island, and it really uh, makes the 15 Plus to me more valuable. If you notice in this video, I didn't really talk a ton about the display, but I'll give it its props for being OLED for being plenty bright and for being pretty darn good. This is a very accurately tuned display. It really reminds you a lot of like a 13 Pro Max without promotion um, or like a 12 Pro Max because the 12 Pro Max has 60 Hertz, but it just has a little bit, It's it looks a little bit better tuned and a little bit brighter. So it's a really beautiful display here. With the Dynamic Island, it definitely looks a little bit different, but the bezels are not super reduced from prior versions. It's kind of like a 14 Pro Max's display without promotion. So a very strong offering here in the display department. And even though this display doesn't have 120 Hertz, what it does have is the same resolution as the other iPhone Pro models. So the same pixels per inch means that the only thing you'll notice is it doesn't scroll as smooth. But I found that after a few days, I stopped thinking about that. I really did. Even though, you know, I'm into tech, I love smooth displays. I really stopped thinking about it. So if somebody who's constantly reviewing full and stopped thinking about it, I'm pretty sure if you're looking for this, it's not really a deal breaker. But if you really, really want to do gaming at a smooth frame rate and you just been wanting promotion, don't even think about this phone because you will be disappointed if you even have the slightest desire of wanting to go to 120 hertz or 90 hertz display. So on this phone, Apple went with the A16 Bionic and the performance on here is absolutely brilliant. It doesn't matter what you're doing, this thing flies through basically everything. The thing though is, this is one area I will say, the refresh does make this phone appear slower than it actually is, um, just because of the way it scrolls, but 60 hertz and the way it, the animations look, they just appear a little slower than like a 14 Pro Max, 15 Pro Max, maybe even 13 Pro Max. But I kind of liked it because, you know, I feel like with the promotion, I want to play with my phone all day because it's so silky smooth and fast. With this one, it just feels like your basic everyday large iPhone for just using it as a tool. And it really hasn't affected much at all. This phone is a boss performer, regardless of the fact that you're not getting the promotion. Three months later, with phone call quality and reception, you can see it's been superb. 
regardless of the fact that this is not, you know, the highest end model, it gets, still gets the same type of antennas, the same type of performance. So in that respect, it's a go. So after three months of ownership with the iPhone 15 or 15 plus, I wanted to um, just say it's been the practical choice. This phone has felt pretty amazing to use. It gets all the same software updates. It feels just like a 14 Pro Max besides having promotion. The matte black is just sexy in my opinion. It's a really beautiful color and it just feels like a really practical choice three months later. I still think it's a great option if you don't want to go all out for a Pro Max. And I like the direction they're going with this plus because if they made these nice premium changes, maybe we'll see a 90 hertz or 120 hertz on the next model. Maybe we'll get the reduced bezels or action button next as well. And then it'll feel like next year you have even a more of a pro like experience. So I feel like that gap is closing between the pro and the plus, but not quite enough. There's still plenty of upgrades to go to the pro max. It just doesn't feel like this year. It's just an upsell to the pro max. This actually seems like it offers quite a good amount of value three months later, but it's still not quite as desirable in my opinion, but it's still much better than the 14 plus. So thumbs up if you enjoyed it. That's my three months later thoughts on this phone. And uh, let me know if you're going to pick one up or if you already have one and share the experience. I'll catch you on the next one. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace. Peace.